Hi everyone, Dr. Nimichek here. I want to talk about something in medicine that's referred to as night sweats. Okay, now, uh, so what's a night sweat to a doctor? Night sweats is not being hot at night, like, oh, I'm just so hot, or a little damp around the head. Night sweats are like drenching sweats, like you, you have to get up and change your, your nightgown or your t-shirt or whatever you're sleeping in, okay, or put a towel down on the mattress because you're just drenching so much, okay? This is a very specific thing. And other than, in, in some rare cases, this is due to a cancer, uh, like lymphoma can do this sometimes. Um, but for the most part, the vast majority of times, this is due to a, a burdensome load of a bacterial infection in the body. Now, if you're horribly ill and hospitalized with sepsis and you got drenching sweats, everybody knows what's wrong. But if you're just not feeling well, or you just generally are okay, but you're having these drenching night sweats, where in the heck's that coming from? Now, in classical medicine, one of the first things that people will say is, oh, these chronic infections like tuberculosis can do it, or if in certain... Uh, these fungal infections in certain regions like uh, histoplasmosis in the Midwest or coccidiomycosis, otherwise known as valley fever in the Southwest, they can do this somewhat, but generally people feel pretty sick with any of those, okay? So let's exclude those. They're uncommon, and you're already going to be going to a doc, and they're going to be hunting down what's going on if you have any of those. But what if you aren't that sick? What if generally you're just kind of not yourself, but you have these sweats, okay? Now, one mistaken thing is uh, women are told this is hormonal. Wrong, okay? Hormones can make you flush, make you have uh, intolerance to different temperature, stuff like that. They're not gonna make you break in a drenching sweat, okay? Especially when you're sleeping. No, that doesn't happen. The very common thing that does this is a large amount of bacterial overgrowth in the small intestine. Okay, what's called SIBO, S-I-B-O, small intestine bacterial overgrowth. Normally in the small intestine, there's a relatively small number of bacteria there. And when you get bacterial overgrowth, which is basically the bacteria from the colon are now abnormally living up in the small intestine. And you can have upwards to 100,000 times the bacteria up there. The intestine's 30 feet long. That's a lot of bacteria growing in your body that shouldn't be. That can cause night sweats. And I see it very frequently. I see it misdiagnosed as hormonal or blah, 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 a bunch of other crazy stuff. It's SIBO. If you don't aren't sick enough that your doctor's already worrying doing tests looking for TB or some other rare kind of thing like that, okay, and um, and it's highly highly treatable with a ten day course of rifaxin. The brand name in America is called Zyfaxan, X I F A X A N. Um, now in America they dose it three times a day for fourteen. I don't think that's necessary. Twice a day for ten days is enough and uh, you'll see the symptom go away. Now, the thing is, if it goes away, there are a subset of patients where they relapse. The bacterial overgrowth can come back. So this is not a failure of uh, rifaximin therapy. This is due to generally that the motility of the small intestine is, is not functioning right and it's causing these relapses. And uh, uh, you'll, you'll need repeated courses. So basically what you need is probably like our protocol or some protocol that reduces inflammation enough to allow your nervous system to recover, then the relapses happen less often, okay? So night sweats, if you're generally feeling well, um, they are from bacterial overgrowth till proven otherwise, okay? If you're having drenching night sweats and you really don't feel well, you're losing weight or something like that, go to your primary. You gotta look for TB, rare cancers, um, you know, as I said, like histoplasmosis or, or uh, valley fever. And, uh, but fortunately, that's a very small subset of patients.
All right. Hope you find that helpful. You all have a good day now.